In this problem, we're told a car is stopped at a traffic light. It then travels along a straight road so that its distance from the light is given by x of t, which equals bt squared minus ct cubed, where b is 2.4 meters squared and c equals 0.12 meters cubed. A, calculate the average velocity of the car for the time interval t equals 0 to t equals 10 seconds. B, calculate the instantaneous velocity of the car at t equals 0, t equals 5 seconds, and t equals 10 seconds. And then C is how long after starting uh, from rest is the car at rest again. So let's just tackle each part, but first let's talk about what we're given. So we're basically just given a position function. And so what I went ahead and did was just plug in B into it. So it was X of T equals BT squared minus CT cubed. And I just plugged in B right here, and then I plugged in C. So let's talk about how to solve this. And by doing that, let's just start with A. So A is going to be calculate the average velocity of the car from the time interval t equals 0 to t equals 10 seconds. So the first part to solve this problem, what we need to do is uh, basically calculate the velocity function. So they give us the uh, position function, right, x of t. But to do this, we need the velocity function. And the way we do that is just by taking the derivative of our uh, position function, and that's going to give you the velocity function. So v of t, if we take the derivative of this, this is just going to become... 4.8t, right? You move this down and minus 1, and then it's going to be minus, and then move this down. This is going to be 0 0.360, and then it's going to be t, and then you subtract 1, so t squared. So now we have v of t, and we're trying to calculate the average velocity of the car from the time interval t equals 0 to t equals 10 seconds. So the way we're going to do that is by taking v of 10, which would be the velocity, right, at the 10 second point, minus the velocity in the beginning, and then the way you take the average, right, this would just give us... Uh, the velocity here because this is just zero the way you find the average is by dividing by the total time that passed in this case it's from zero to ten so ten seconds so this right here is basically how we're going to solve for a so v of ten minus v of zero divided by ten uh, so let's go ahead and do that so let's just keep in mind if i plug in zero here this is zero minus zero is zero so this is just going to be zero so really it's just v of ten divided by ten so what we want to do now is just plug in ten so Plugging in 10, 4.8 times 10 is just 48. And then minus 10 squared is 100 times 0.36 is just 36. So this is just 12. And then we're dividing by 10 once again. So it's going to be 1.2. That's the average. So 1.2 and then our units, this is velocity, so meters per second. So this is your answer to A or the first part. Now let's do B. So B is going to be calculate the instantaneous velocity of the car at t equals 0, t equals 5, and t equals 10. So keep in mind what we found here was the velocity function. And so if we want to find the instantaneous velocity, all you really have to do is just plug in the time value, and that gives you the velocity at that time, which is just the instantaneous velocity. So let's just start with each point. So at t equals 0, which is v of 0, once again, it's 0. You're just plugging in. So 0 meters per second is the velocity. Now we're going to plug in v of 5. So plugging in 5, it's just going to be 4.8 times 5 minus 0 0.360 times 5 squared. So Go ahead and plug this in, 4.8 times 5 minus 0 0.360 times 5 squared, which is 25. And so when you go ahead and do this, you're going to find it equals 15. So 15 meters per second, that's going to be um, the instantaneous velocity at t equals 5 seconds, and then v of 10. So this is 4.8 times 10 minus 0 0.360 times 10 squared. So go ahead and do this. This is 48. And then keep in mind, this is just going to be, uh, this is 36. So minus 36, you're just going to get 12. So it's going to be equal to 12 meters per second. So now you've got the instantaneous velocity at, this is at 0, this is at 5, and this is at 10. And so now um, we're going to do C. And so for C, there's a little trick we can do to solve for C. So C is going to be how long after starting from rest is the car at rest again. So let's keep in mind what at rest means. So at rest, or something's at rest when V is equal to zero, right? When the velocity is zero, it's not moving, which means it's at rest. So what we want to find is when V equals zero. And the, the trick, I think, to do this, right? Or I think the best way to do this is by just graphing your uh, velocity function. So what you want to do is just take your calculator, uh, right? So take your calculator, and you're just going to plug in this function. So you have... 4.8t, just plug in x, right? Go into the graphing, and then 4.8x minus 0 0.360, and then multiply it by x squared. So when you go ahead and do that, you're going to get a graph. And so make sure your window is set so you can see the whole thing. 
And so let's make sure you go ahead and do that. And so once you've got that, what we're trying to find is how long, uh, how long after starting from rest is the car at rest again? So what we're looking for is basically when it crosses the uh, x-axis. So you should see in the beginning, right, when you graph it, it crosses through the x-axis in the beginning, which we know it starts from rest because when we plugged in zero, it was zero. And so we can find out how long, right, in time because the x-axis is time in this. And then the y-axis is velocity. So you just want to see where it crosses the x-axis. So what you can do is just click second trace if you're using a TI-84, or you can just look and see when it crosses zero. And so you're just going to see where it crosses the x-axis. Uh, for the second time, right? Because the first time is just at zero. And so when you do that, you're going to get x equals 13.333 and so on. Keep in mind, this is the t value. So 13.33 repeating. And then this is going to be in seconds. So this is when v equals zero, right? The velocity is zero. So how long after starting from rest is the car at rest again? Well, it's 13.33 seconds. So uh, this right here is going to be your answer to c. These were your answers to B, and then this was your answer to A. So these are going to be your answers, and hopefully you found this video useful.